What's up guys? Welcome to Weigel Friends English and today we're going to do another phrasal verb video. Yeah, we're going to talk about phrasal verbs of education. This is part one of a two-part series and we will release part two next week. Yep, and each one is going to have a corresponding natural conversation video so you guys get two conversations out of this one. Some things that you guys need to remember as you do these videos or if this is the first one that you've watched is you need to take notes while you're listening to it and then you need to start practice writing some sentences or go out and use it because yeah. if you don't use it, you're just going to lose it. Yeah, exactly. And so the comments that we talk about today are the ones that you can't find in the dictionary. That's why mm -hmm. we make these videos for you guys so that you can see what they actually mean in context, not just what a dictionary can tell you, but more information, even new information of what Americans actually mean when they say some of these phrasal verbs. So let's get started. <laughs> section is talking about actually getting to university or getting to the school. Yes. So we're going to talk about arriving. And one of the first things you need to do is to send in your application. Right. So sending in meaning to give the application and all the things that you have to give to in order to, to go to the school. That has to be done first because you don't know whether or not you're going to go to the school yet. Right. So in the States, it could be anything from sending in your test scores, plus your GPA, plus a, an application form. A lot of universities have application forms. A paper, um, transcripts. There's a lot of stuff that you have to send in. Right. But once you've sent everything in and you receive a decision letter in the mail, then you finally get to enroll. Right. And so enroll is a more formal term. Enroll in or enroll at a university yeah. is the next phrasal verb. But it right. basically means that you are actually putting your name down. So you may get accepted to many universities or many colleges. But when you actually enroll in a university or enroll at a university, you actually get to be a student there at that point. Right. So we say enroll in when we're talking about you're in the process of joining the university. But when you say enroll at at, you're treating the university as a place. Hmm. So usually the picture in an American mind, when you say I'm enrolling in university, it means you're about, you're enrolling to participate in university, hmm. to go through the process of university. But when we say enroll at, we're specifically talking about the location, right. which university. Yeah. So if somebody says, where did you enroll at? Then you're going to say the name of the university. Right. If somebody says, did you enroll in university? You say, yeah, I'm going to start in September. Yeah. This word is especially important because of the online schooling that is happening. It's going to change some of these prepositions that we connect with these phrasal verbs. So I wouldn't be surprised if people stopped using enroll at a university if they're doing most of their university online. Right. Uh, absolutely. So they might say I enrolled in online classes or they could say I enrolled at this university. But when they say, oh, are you in person or online? They might just say online at that point. Once you have been enrolled, then the next process is to sign up for classes. You go to the registrar and you sign up for probably the core classes at your freshman year. Then you actually get to see the schedule. This, this is some people's favorite part is to try to figure out how to sign up for all these classes and how to fit all the puzzle pieces together. I yeah. know that we had a lot of friends that, that that was one of their favorite things. Yeah, we had a friend who had like five plans to mm. get through the four years of university. So, yeah, I mean, it's just it is kind of fun to play with it and see, but you also have to have time for that. <laughs> right. So sign up for classes. You got to make sure you do that on time because you don't want to be late and then miss those slots. The fourth one in this section that we're going to talk about is you have to move away from your family and to move into the dorms. You mm. can also say move in the dorms, but yeah. we would use into to be far more specific here. Yeah. So. This is a special time that a lot of people have when they go to university is to actually get away from their family, to move away from their family, to physically separate and move away from their family, and then to move into a dorm is a really yeah. special thing. But when you get there, you might say, I moved from my hometown to university. So be mm. careful on how you're going to use your prepositions here. We'll have to do a preposition video at some point because... Yeah. These are tricky. How to use from versus away, how to use in versus at. Yeah. There, there are rules for it, and they're not rules that you should memorize. It's just how you frame your mind. 
What are you thinking of when you say it? That's how we choose our prepositions. The next section is all about lectures. Yeah, in school there are a lot of lectures. Honestly, it really is a skill to be able yes. to listen well in an hour or plus long lecture. It's, it's a hard thing to get used to for some people. Right, and for some of you guys, you have the added challenge of coming from another language background. Mm. So when you come to listen to university English in America, you have to be able to keep up with the instructors or the professors. You have to be able to hear them and take down your notes. So yeah. and that's these, the first one is yeah. take down the notes or write down. You can do both, but you might hear it said every now and then, like take that down or write it down. You might hear that interchangeably in some settings. Write down is far more applicable, yeah. but if you want to, you might hear take that down from a professor. They might say, hey, this slide, you need to take it down. Another one that's put similar down. to that is put down or mm -hmm. jot down. Yes, put down, jot down, take down, write down. All of those are synonymous. Yeah, especially the down aspect kind of means there's a... It's kind of like you're catching their words and putting it on paper. Yeah, and also yeah. there's a little bit of urgency to it. Like, yes. cause like especially with teachers, if they have a slideshow and then they go to the next slide, you need to write it down before they go to the next yes. slide. There's yeah. urgency, there's importance, there's a lot of stuff that comes with that, just this, just that one word. Unless it's jot down. Yeah, then that's like, just And jot down is like kind of moseying on paper. <laughs> I just slap things on this paper. <laughs> yes. So the next one is to pass down. So this one might be passing down information and it has this idea of kind of this multi-generational idea mm. or from teacher to student who becomes a teacher who passes it down to his students who become teachers who pass it down. So the idea is that there's this chain of information. Yeah. There's the source and then there's the student and there's several links in that chain and yeah. it passes down to the students eventually. Yeah. I mean, a lot of freshmen when they come into university, they have no idea what right. the university is like. And so they have to be told a lot of the information either by teachers or counselors or upperclassmen how the world works, how this university world works. And so they have a lot of information passed down to them. So hopefully when they get a little bit older, like you said, they can pass that information down to right. others. Right. And we specifically use passed down for information that's meant to be passed on. Right. And so we have this idea that in American culture, if you've experienced it, then you have the right to share it. Right. Particularly if you've been through the full freshman year and all of its craziness and adjustments and all the things that you have to go through, the orientations and everything. Once you've been through all that and you are a sophomore, no, you're not a senior, but you have every right to pass it on to the next class of freshmen. Yeah. So that's one of the things that's pretty cool is this idea of passing the torch or passing down information. Yeah. Another thing that you really need to do during a lecture is to listen up for something or listen out for something. Right. So you'll probably listen out for announcements or updates or things like of that nature. You listen yeah. out for it has this idea of watch out. Yeah. So listen out for is like you're listening for something something specific. Yeah, and that could either be during the lecture, maybe something that you're taking notes on, or the teacher is going to say an announcement of mm -hmm. the upcoming test or project right. or something like that. Right, and listen up is something kind of like a command almost, is like, hey, listen up, yeah. meaning stop daydreaming, <laughs> get off your phone, you need to listen up. Right, the next three are read off, read out or read aloud. Right. And I love these because in Chinese, they're all one word, which is just, it's nice. In English, we have three words that kind of all mean the same thing. It means use your voice. Don't just read it on a piece of paper, but actually read it off the paper into the air. Or read it out loud or read it aloud. Yeah. And to read off is something similar to what we call sound off, which is Kind of like, we call it popcorn sometimes, yeah. but it's the teacher's going to give a passage and they want each student to read one sentence at a time. And it doesn't matter what order or who reads when, it's just every student has to read one sentence and by the end of it, the whole page is read, right? Yeah. So then you get this popcorn reading effect and each student is going to read off a sentence hopefully not interrupting another student at the same time. It's just a way to make sure that people are actually paying attention. Really, it's not the best way to make sure no. people are paying attention. It's more of a younger elementary school, middle school thing to do. Yeah, or like the teacher may read off the student names to make sure that they're present. That's right. kind of an older thing too, though, now. 
Yeah, but it's like that's, roll call. Yeah, that's the idea, though, is that there's some sort of information, whether it's a text or it's a list, and people are reading it out loud so other people can hear it. So the next section is all about assignments and projects. Yeah. So other than lectures, a lot of the time in university is spent either on assignments or tests. And so as a result, we actually have a lot of phrasal verbs that go with that. So when you finish something, you're going to hand it in or turn it in. And both of these are completely synonymous except you turn things in online. Yeah. You can't hand something in online, but you can either turn it in or hand it in in class. Yeah. So a lot of teachers will say, hey, do this assignment and it is due next week. Make sure you hand it in to me before class starts because sometimes yeah. students will try to do the homework right. in the class. So hand it in to me before class starts. Right. And if they say hand it in, that means they expect a physical copy in class. Right. But if they say turn it in, it's a little ambiguous. Maybe it's in person. Maybe it's online. Maybe it doesn't matter. It could be either one. Yeah. So some assignments, your teacher may be a little bit nicer than other teachers. and they'll, Or maybe they'll have you correct your mistakes by looking up the answer. That's mm -hmm. the phrasal verb is to look up. It just means to research. So you don't really have to physically look up. But the idea is you're opening a book and you're looking through it in order to find the answer. Yeah. If you're going to do some speed reading in order to look something up, then you would look through articles, you'll look through the dictionary, you'll look through magazines, whatever it is, in order to find specific information that you're looking for. Yeah, this is the idea of skimming. The next one is sum up. So this is one of the most difficult skills that we have found in our English teaching journey is to just teach our students how to summarize or sum up a passage because you have mm -hmm. to take the whole passage and the meaning and you have to right. boil it down. There's another phrasal verb for you. Boil it down to where it is just the just the important parts. Sum up right. the passage. What did it actually say? Leave out the parts that are not important and get to the meat. Right. The idea is you're not including details here. You're just getting to the main idea and why. Yeah. The main idea and why. And why does not mean reason one, reason two, reason three. <laughs> why means the underlying purpose. And right. this is something that may or may not be directly stated. But the idea is what the author means, like their main idea, and then why are they saying this? Right. Yeah. It's, it's a hard skill, but it's very important for a lot of like book reviews, for example. They'll say, summarize the book in one page or sum up the book in one page and then tell me your thoughts on it in another mm -hmm. page. Yeah. The next one is to hand out or pass around. And or to pass out, but not like... Yeah, not like pass out. <laughs> yeah, so hand out, pass out, or pass around. So hand out or pass out is something that one person specifically hands out. And this is very physical, okay? Yeah. You're not going to pass things out online. But to hand around is maybe a stack of things, like a stack of papers, a stack of quizzes, whatever it is. And they physically hand the stack to one student, one student takes one and then gives it on, passes it on to the next one. They'll get one and pass it on. So pass around is very much, it's going to go around. That stack of papers is going around, but to hand out or pass out is one at a time. Yeah. So for example, one of our classes in university would pass around a sign-in sheet. So instead of the mm -hmm. teacher calling roll, reading out everyone's name, they would just pass around a sign-up sheet. So you say, hey, this is my signature, sign it. And then you say that you're there. Yeah. <laughs> The next one is to pair off or to pair up. Yeah, a lot of projects mean that you have to combine your work and your effort with another person and try to do this project together. And it is very difficult to do very well sometimes because there's seems like there's always one person that's just not doing very much work. In big group, in right? Big in like three or four people in a group or more. Yeah, that's but right. Because pair off means two. just two. Yeah. Uh, not like, you know, get into groups is what we would say if it was like more than two, but pair off means two together. Right. So a teacher might give this as an imperative or a command. They might say, hey, it's time to pair off for this assignment. Two people, one paper. Here you go. And so when they say pair off or pair up, what they mean is every the class stand up and go find their workmate. But Otherwise, a teacher might pair you up themselves. Yeah. The last one in this section is to mark off or check off things that are on like a to-do list or like maybe a project list to say, yeah. hey, you need to do this, this, and this. So we mark off or you check off things on that list when you've done them. And it's just a way to do accountability to say, right. hey, I've done this part. Or some teachers might even break a paper down into sections and then you turn in one section at a time. So it 
yeah. is good paper. You don't have to worry about going back at the very right. beginning. So you'll be checking these things off as you go. Right. Thank you guys so much for watching. That's part one of part two of our phrasal verbs of education. Yes. And if you guys really like these type of videos where we're talking about phrasal verbs and the intricacies between using on versus at and combining them with the verbs and how that changes in context, let us know in the comments. Let us know that you want more of these videos because we can do that. We have this massive list of phrasal verbs and we've paired them up into context. So if you want more of these, let us know and we'll definitely make some more for you. All right, guys, that's it for today. We'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye. Bye.